Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I am Therese Lagama, Director of Public Programs for Social Impact here at the Kennedy Center. Thank you all for being here. Is there anyone in the audience? This is their first very Merry Tuba Christmas. Wow. Well, welcome. Hope you'll make it part of your annual holiday tradition, as so many others have. Um, this, is, this show is part of our ongoing Millennium Stage series. We offer free programming throughout the year from Wednesday through Sunday, live programming, film. Check out the website, Millennium Stage, on the Kennedy Center's webpage. Um, you'll, you'll see more details about all that's coming up. Um, of course, we wouldn't be able to bring you this kind of programming without the generous support of our sponsors, the Centene Charitable Foundation and Boeing. Let's give them all a big round of applause and thank you for free programming. Before we kick things off, I want to bring out our host for the evening. Please join me in giving a big welcome to Chris Quaid. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Enjoy. Merry Tuba Christmas. We're so excited to be back inside after three very long years, and we appreciate what everyone has done to support us over that time. We had a virtual Tuba Christmas in 2020, and then last year we had a wonderful outdoor tent party that was Tuba Christmas, and it was a great time. You know, you can't, you can't quell the Christmas cheer, but now we're back. We're back inside. Well, this is my favorite time of the year. I've played in so many tuba Christmas concerts, both here in Washington, D.C. and all around the country, and I, I just get more excited every single time. Washington, D.C. has the best, and part of the reason is our conductor. He's come back here for something like the fifth year or maybe seventh or eighth. I didn't keep count. Please welcome Andrew Hitz. How many, how many, how many years is it? This is not just a concert, this is also going to be a sing-along. <laughs> and so we have someone to help. And it's not me, but we were going to play each of the Christmas carols two times. The first time it'll do just be the tubas, and the second time we're going to ask that you sing along. And to help you with that, I'd like you to welcome, for the very first time, as a tuba Christmas singer, and his name is Matt Scollin. Our first carol tonight, as it is every year, the wonderful Adeste Fidelis, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
Now, I could not help but notice that not everyone was singing. <laughs> Perhaps that's because you didn't know the words. We're going to help you. This next carol, all you have to remember is fa la 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 la. This is Deck the Halls. That's quite a sound, that sound of 200 tuba players. And I know we have some first time listeners here tonight. I, we got to hear that again. Tubas, can we play the last little bit of that carol? Let's hear that great low note. That's a great, wonderful sound. So a little bit behind the music here. Normally, when we present this concert, we prepare a list for the players of everything we're going to play in the order. And this year, we didn't do that. So the first two announcements, you heard me trying to find a way to say number one or number three, but have it be sort of part of the announcement. No, I'm just going to say numbers, and now you know why I'm saying the numbers. Right? It's just more honest that way. <laughs> For the next piece, we're going to feature these wonderful instruments that are in the back. They are the great sousaphones. <laughs> the sousaphones are named for, and they honor the memory of the wonderful uh, marine band conductor, John Philip Sousa, um, also a composer of some marches, I understand. They're going to have the melody in this next piece. This is God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, number four. Christmas Day. 
to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Every year, I am just amazed at the lengths that the tuba players go through, and euphonium players, to decorate their instruments. Uh, you know, right here. This is amazing. And at my first tuba Christmas, if I wanted lights on my tuba, I needed an extension cord. So we've come such a long way. Many of our Christmas carols they come from all over the world, and this next one is one of my favorites. It comes to us from France. It's the first Noel. Number five. Did you know that tubas can bow? This is one of my favorite parts of the concert, and it's favorite part of lots of the repairmen in the area, too. Tubas, let's take a bow. Show us. Okay, that's probably enough. What can I say about this next piece? The very next piece in the book. <laughs> I hope you enjoy Good King Wenceslas.
Some of our Christmas carols may not have actually been written for Christmas, and it's the case with this next carol. Although it is now a Christmas carol, originally it was written as a poem, and it was written as a, a sort of anti-war protest uh, by a minister in 19th century America. And because it spoke so much of peace, it has been adopted and has become one of the great Christmas carols. This is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Number nine. I'd like to pause now to share some of our players with you this evening. One of the wonderful parts about Tuba Christmas is that anyone who has a tuba or euphonium can come and play. There is no prerequisite. You'd show up at three, you rehearse at four, you play at six. It's great. Professionals and young students and much more experienced, they're all here on the same stage or in the balcony. 
And a matter of fact, to illustrate that, I want to introduce you to our youngest and our most experienced player tonight. Our youngest is here at 10 years old, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> That's Jane Bowman, and if it's impressive that she's here at 10 last year, she was here at 9. And I would put it weird if she was the same age last year, right? And on the other end of the spectrum, we have up on our balcony here, this is Ed Portner, and he is a lovely age. I did have a young man approach me after our rehearsal and say, well, you do the youngest and oldest players, do you do the oldest instrument? And I said, I do now. <laughs> and so I'd like to introduce you to, I don't think the tuba has a name, but the gentleman playing it, McLean Stevens, is playing a 1926 King. I mean, the tuba as an instrument has really only been around for 200 years, and that guy's got half of it. <laughs> so our next tune is a wonderful tune to hear you sing. I'm looking forward to it. I hope all 17 of you sing it well. This is Angels We Have Heard on High. This year is the 49th year of Tuba Christmas, which began, thank you. It began with one concert in New York City, and it continues this year with hundreds of concerts all throughout the country and throughout the world. About 20,000 tuba euphonium players will participate in Tuba Christmas this year. And these concerts were the vision of the great Harvey Phillips. Now, it was conceived as a tribute to Harvey's own teacher, Bill Bell, who was born on Christmas Day. And 
The Christmas carols you hear were arranged by Alec Wilder, a wonderful composer, American composer, who actually died on Christmas Eve in 1980. Harvey created these concerts as a tribute to his teacher, but they've become a tribute to Harvey himself because he left us in 2010. And every tuba Christmas since then, we remember and honor him. So remember Harvey Phillips and all those wonderful tuba players and non-tuba players who have left us as we listen to number 11, Silent Night. Our next carol was written by another clergyman from the United States, this time in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which is the home of the Little League World Series, for those of you that are interested. Now, historical accounts of the three wise men, including the Bible, do not give the number as three. And they, some religions have concluded that there may have been as many as 12. Also, they may or may not have actually been kings. Um, but. It doesn't sound really cool to play the song 12 Random Guys from the East. <laughs> so history can take a break while we play We Three Kings, which is number 15.
star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceeding, guide us to I think maybe the players here on stage are getting a direct applause effect, and that's wonderful, but I, I feel like we need to now give a round of applause to our antiphonal tubas that are playing in these wonderful tiers over here. I've already mentioned that we've just kind of been coming out of this very difficult multi-year period and everything was affected, Tuba Christmas being the least of those. And although I recognized some of these individuals last year, I want to do it again in this setting because uh, during that last two to three year period, we lost two really, really good friends of Washington DC Tuba Christmas. One of the first, uh, men I ever met as a tuba player. He was my teacher growing up. He was the tuba Christmas coordinator in Washington, D.C. for decades. And he was just a wonderful, kind-hearted man. I, I never heard him say a bad word about anything. And uh, we lost Bob Palanche in January of 2020. And uh, we miss him. Uh, he was always a face here at Tuba Christmas, at the registration table. He would usually bring some odd instrument, like a serpent or an Ophiclide, and that was kind of cool. And his basement was like a super laboratory to a 12-year-old kid. I have to tell you, there were all kinds of chemicals in there. I wanted to break everything. <laughs> we miss Bob, and I guess Bob probably was really disappointed because he never got to be the oldest player at Tuba Christmas. And the guy that beat him out was Joe Lear. And we also lost Joe. I think his last Tuba Christmas here, he was 94. And, um, and we miss him too. Joe was just always a smiling face and he just had that sort of cockiness of knowing that he was the oldest one and <laughs> I like that. We remember these tuba legends as we remember all the tuba players that have gone before us. And this time we're just gonna listen to the tubas on the next carol, number 21, Lo How a Rose Air Blooming. So every year we talk about the great Harvey Phillips, the founder of Tuba Christmas, but behind every great tuba player, there's a tuba player's wife. Carol Phillips was a force of nature. She was just 
a woman of incredible intelligence and passion and will. Iron will, people, trust me on this. She'd be wonderful, though, and everything that Harvey did would not have been possible without her. Her name was Carol Phillips, and so the next piece we're going to play honors her. This is the Carol of the Bells. It's number 28. I think the tuba players should take another bow. This time, if you want to take a photo, tuba players, take a bow. We know that many of the younger members of our audience are awaiting a visit from someone very special this Christmas. Santa Claus. Santa gives toys to good girls and boys. He's done it for years and years. But who would have thought that Santa, Santa has got a special wish of his own. Santa wants a tuba for Christmas. He knows playing tuba is fun. Santa wants a tuba for Christmas, but who's gonna give him one? Santa wants a tuba for Christmas, a bright, shiny tuba to play. Santa wants a tuba for Christmas. Oh, please, won't you send one his way? Santa knows the tuba blows the jolliest sound you'll hear. What he hopes to see waiting under his tree is a tuba to toot when he's finished his route. 
Santa wants a tube for Christmas. He never got a present before. Santa wants a tube for Christmas. It's all that he's ever asked for. It's all that he's ever asked for. Can you imagine old Santa Claus bringing presents to all the good girls and boys across the world? Just think, he gets home after his long trip, and what does he see under the tree? Why, a big shiny tuba with a big red bow on it that Mrs. Claus left for him. Well, I think he would pick it up and start to play it, and he would sound something like Brian Sands from the Air Force Band. Santa wants a tube for Christmas. He never got a present before. Santa wants a tube for Christmas. It's all that he's ever asked for. It's all that he's ever asked for. <laughs> As I look into the audience tonight, I, I can see a lot of children here, and I'm very happy because we're going to need some help on this next carol. I'm hoping we can get some children to come up here and sing this next one. We're going to just, yeah, actually, that's what I want. I want, if any of you want to sing, just come right up. We're going to have people helping you come up on the stage, and you're going to be my choir. That's right. I hope I get. 33 children. Nailed it. Right. No, play, play soft, right? Soft. Yeah, come on this way. just a few more. Boy, I have to tell you, there were a lot more than I thought when I first came up with this idea. You guys, come on over. So what songs do you all know? What do you want to sing? What's your favorite song? Uh, that's the wrong answer. What? Uh, she said jingle bells. Yes, yes, she did. That's what we're going to do then. Yeah, I mean, I know. We don't know the grades. All right, there's going to be a short introduction, and then you guys are the stars. You're going to take it away, Maestro.
full disclosure, they actually asked us to play the Grinch. So next year, next year, we'll get it for next year. It's the 50th anniversary next year. We got to do something big. The night is coming to a close for us, and before we kind of come to the last two or so pieces, I want to recognize all the people that helped us here tonight. Uh, the Kennedy Center has been a wonderful partner to Tuba Christmas for 20 and more years. And they only kept us out in the hall for 15 of those years, so. This is exciting to be inside. But everyone from the stage work to the ushers, to the front of house people, to the wonderful sound people, and uh, the streaming that's happening online, we, we couldn't do it without those wonderful people. And so please give the Kennedy Center staff a round of applause. As I said, all good things must come to an end, and we're going to play our last tune for you. This is number 14. This is Joy to the World. Take a bow. Before we go, we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas 23 times. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs>